Fraud is a really scary subject, and here to tell us why not to be scared but aware is Paul Van Nest, who is chair from Rotary, and talks about fraud awareness. I'm so glad you came in because this is such a big subject. It's in the news every day, isn't it? It, it really is, and just when you think that you're, you, it, it, there's nothing that surprise you, they come <laughs> up with something <laughs> even better or better or worse or however you want to look at it, and I. And I sometimes I think, we think these people are stupid, but they're not. They're very, very clever that they come up with how to worm their way into your wallet. One of the problems that people have in talking about having, being the victims of fraud is that they feel st stupid. They feel <laughs> like they've been had, violated, everything else. Oh, but that yeah. what I try to say is, it's not that you're stupid, it's that they're too darn smart. They're trained, they're schooled yes. by psychologists and psychiatrists. They know how to, as you say, worm their way into our brains. And they have many, many techniques. The, big, the biggest one being speed. It's always urgent. Oh, oh yes, always you've got to do something urgent. right now. And, and, and if you don't, there's going to be all kinds of consequences. And, exactly. and, and it seems that when people are victims of this, that they, they really feel like victims, but more so than if you're walking down the street and somebody, you know, threatened you and said, mm -hmm. give me all your money. You mm -hmm. wouldn't be embarrassed by that happening mm -hmm. to you, but no. for some reason, uh, fraud becomes, has that whole other element in it. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it's because you feel, not only feel violated as you would if you were robbed, like I was robbed, <laughs> uh, ganged up by five kids and, uh, I, you know, they lifted my wallet out of my pocket. Yeah. I never felt it go, but I knew it was gone. Mm -hmm. Never it, saw my wallet again. But these guys yep, do the same thing. Violated. And then on top of that, you turn around and say, well, why would you give them that money? Why did you fall for this? Why did... Mm -hmm. I think, <coughs> that I, I don't know of any legitimate organization or, or agency that would ask for money in credit cards, or, or I'm sorry, gift cards. Gift cards, Gift yeah. cards, yeah. I mean, yeah. let's think about it. So, yep. there, so would that be one of the first warning signs? If they talk in terms of iTunes gift cards, cards or... Gift or, um, or Bitcoin. Bitcoin, if really? If anybody says anything about Bitcoin or cards, let's deal with the cards. They, uh, you can mail the cards to somebody, they're untraceable. They're gone. That's cash, and wherever the, they're picked up, it's cash. Oh. Number two, they can give the code on the back. If you give them the code on the back, kiss the money goodbye, whoever you've given the code to, that's cash. Wow. So you, you can't touch that. But then wow. there's the subtleties and the perverseness of, uh, of Bitcoin. And uh, Bitcoin, um, I mean, there's people making legitimate money and transactions in Bitcoin, but the fraudsters have got their fingers in a great deal of it. And if you hear the word Bitcoin in any conversation or anything on the internet, hang up or shut down. Don't talk right. anymore. Walk away. And I think the not talking is, is a good point too, is you don't give information out over the phone. If a, if a bank calls you and says there's been a transaction on your account that mm -hmm. looks suspicious, mm -hmm. can you tell me what your credit card <coughs> number is? Well, you, don't they you have tell it? Me, you tell me what my credit card is. Right. Hey, you're calling mm -hmm. from the bank. You tell me mm -hmm. what my credit card number is. Or, or, the, or the, the other one is they say we see a suspicious withdrawal on your bank account. Well, they're looking at your bank account. So ask them what the transaction was just before or just after that. Click. Um, They'll hang up. Oh, there's a they, yeah. You know, if they know that you've had a bad transaction, then they're looking at your account. Oh, right. So just ask. Right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's. I, I, can I go one step further? Yeah, sure, please. Yeah. Um, please. Families are always a, a problem. Um, <laughs> Somebody, <laughs> when don't it comes take to that this, too right? far. <laughs> All right. We're okay. talking fraud. <laughs> We're talking fraud here, not generally. <laughs> but uh, the truth is um, that I had read several years, a couple of years ago, that one out of seven frauds are perpetrated by family members. No. One out of seven. How? I could not believe that, but I had a, a policeman from the fraud unit heard, heard our talk once. We wanted him to 
proofread us, if you like. <laughs> and uh, he um, said, it might be closer to one in five. So, okay. so this would be, I need money to get my car fixed, but in fact the money is not to get your car fixed. Is that the right. kind of That's fraud we're talking yep, about? Yep, okay. Yep. Uh, maybe they feel entitlement. Maybe they need the money. They're desperate. They know that the uh, parent, grandparent, aunt, uncle, they've got money. Um, you know, I, I had a phone call. To, Dad, I've <laughs> been in an accident. Oh. It's hurt my throat. I can't talk properly. <laughs> right, right. Okay. Um, uh -huh. I said, what's the name of your cat? <laughs> Just off the top. Bingo. <laughs> And from that, uh, can I suggest that people consider a family password? Oh, what a good idea. So all you need to do is to say, what's the family password? And the other oh. end of the phone will go click because they have no idea where to go. Oh it my could gosh. be a cat's name. It could be the... A nonsense word. A it nonsense could be, it word. Could it could anything. be anything. Yep. Oh, yep. what a good idea. Yep. So share idea. share a family password with your family and extended family. Oh, what a good idea. And uh, that uh, just makes sure that you're dealing with a family member. Well, but remember, the family member could be swindling as well. <laughs> and yes, so it's a possibility. That and we all say it's not happen. possible, but be careful because they can get desperate. They can it get very desperate. And I always say desperate people do desperate things. Bingo. Yeah, yeah. I think the one that bothers me more than anything are the ones that, that work on your emotions. And and the, you know, uh, Grandpa, I've been arrested, kind of, it, that's one of them. It, it, but the other are the romance scams. And Good for you. It, exactly. It just it's seems torture. that you, you've got people who mm -hmm. are, they're lonely, they're mm -hmm. vulnerable, mm -hmm. and... They, they, and they're, they, they're so easily found because there's the obituary. Yeah. says you've lost a spouse. Now you're vulnerable. They know that. But they won't, they won't phone you up the next day and start romancing. They'll, they'll phone you up in a month or two or five or six. They've got lots of time. They're working on other people that lost their spouse six months ago. So they just keep the records. They can find out a great deal about you on the Internet quite easily. Google yourself. <laughs> You'll find out just how easy it is if you're in LinkedIn or any of those Facebook be careful because they can find out a lot about you. So they find out that I'm very interested in the American Civil War, for example. So guess what? They're going to say, you know, something that's really intrigued me is the American Civil War. <laughs> I'm what? all excited. Hey, oh, I, wow. Yeah, I, I, have, I have found my, my soulmate here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, the way, they, you know, they worm their way in. And eventually they can... Uh, you know, start asking for money, uh, either for transportation or their mother or their grandmother needs uh, hospital care. Um, it can go as far as as, uh, as marriage, and uh, then you start getting into concerns about wills, for example. So be careful oh. because uh, oh, if you get it, and you don't even have to be married apparently. Um, you know, so if you're getting a relationship with the person talk to a lawyer fast mm -hmm. because there's ways you can protect your will in British Columbia and Alberta as far as I know they're the only two provinces where a will is not uh, it may be may be voided except in those two provinces by a, a relationship not even marriage okay so, so you have I'm to be careful about that one I, I'm a little confused uh, mm. so what happens with your will well <coughs> If you get married or into a partnership, okay. okay, a formal partnership, I've heard everything from three months to three years okay. of cohabitation, for example. Right. But um, from from that point on, um, if uh, you were to die, um, there may be another will. And, oh, and right, yeah, right, and and, and that leaves and everything that to to his children or her children as opposed to your own. Your own. Yep. Mm. Oh. But I wow. am so far from a lawyer, but I have heard this, and uh, wow. I just sound it as a warning note only. Um, talk to a lawyer before you get involved with another person, and make sure mm -hmm. that your will will stand up to a challenge that might be made by that partner. 
there is so many things. There are so many things I want to ask you, and I am, and, and fortunately, mm. time time here. Mm. So, if people out there, you'll come out and, get, and, and do guest speaking engagements mm -hmm. that, that give mm -hmm. them a lot more time than fortunately we've had. Mm -hmm. So, will you do that? Go out and talk to people more about. More than happy to. Um, I've seen enough information. Sorry, I've I've talked to enough people that have run into trouble that it's highly motivated myself and the other Rotarians that are on my committee. So we've got six teams of presenters potentially to speak to groups. So we've been speaking to groups in um, uh, retirement homes, uh, in condos, in apartment buildings, in churches, neighborhood. We you had a neighborhood you one you just a while because ago. Because the fact is nobody is immune from this, oh yeah, no. from, from a kid all the way up to a senior citizen. Absolutely. Well, mm -hmm. I, 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 uh, I don't know if I'll sleep tonight, Paul, thanks very much, <laughs> but, I do, <laughs> but I do appreciate your coming in yeah. and telling us all about this. Thank you so much. Well, it's been my pleasure to be a part of your program. <laughs> thanks, Donna. Thank you.